Hello, all you Tech Days fans. My name is Yvette Reddick of the Main UNM IT Applications Department, where I serve on the application support team under the management of Dr. Stephen A. Spitz. Uh, the purpose of this video is to provide you with a view of the interface, uh, call it a tour, if you may, uh, from an account associated with the University of New Mexico. However, it is important that you are aware that all UNM faculty and staff are not required to have an Adobe Sign account to participate in the signature process. It is recommended to create accounts for those that manage the forms for the department as well as the form completion process. In most instances, it would be more efficient to use a departmental account for some of the features I am about to demonstrate especially regarding the web forms. Additionally, you will see why there is a need to centralize your document management with a departmental account, especially when dealing with students and external entities. Once your department has identified which Adobe Sign accounts will be created, it is important to ensure that your Adobe Sign account has either been created or migrated with the UNM license of Adobe Sign. This will allow you to access items that have been shared by members of UNM groups within the application, such as templates via the library feature. Some of you may be looking for some additional information regarding workflows, especially in regards to using them with web forms. There is some development taking place in this area. However, we are in the process of testing the ability to dynamically use workflows with web forms. We appreciate your patience with us as we work to implement the use of these two features together. Now, the majority of your accounts, unless you have been designated as a group or account administrator, will provide you with access to send and manage your Adobe Sign documents. The home screen, of course, serves as your dashboard, providing you with quick access to tools and features. There are two different views provided. You can currently see the classic view of Adobe Sign, but when I click the switch to new experience option, located in the upper right corner, just under my name, you will see the new and improved view of Adobe Sign. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner. This section right here is where we get a signature. So request signatures, you can get them from the cloud, your local desktop, a map drive, you can get them from the library and down here are the additional features that we saw uh, fill and sign a document, publish a web form, create a template. Those would be the options that we will go over. Manage and track all agreements. Uh, you can actually do that from either here or from uh, the item listed in the ribbon. Here are uh, a couple of notifications. It tells me I have three signatures in progress. Uh, and as you can see, as I hover over this, uh, it gives you the opportunity to click on it and actually see what those three documents are. This also takes you to manage. As you can see, the manage option in the ribbon is highlighted uh, and it takes you to that section to identify the items that are out for signature. And so this, uh, that alert was referencing those three documents that are awaiting my signature uh, or that are in progress my apologies uh, waiting for me there aren't any waiting for me and here are the events and alerts remember i showed you that there were alerts um, regarding reminders earlier these are the the alerts that were there these are the events that have taken place in my account uh, so far and as you can see I've been working away on this thing. So that provides you with a, a, a quick overview regarding the, the different views. I think I'm going to stick with the new experienced view for right now. Um, however, uh, there will be uh, videos and tutorials made available for you if you like to view things in the classic experience. First of all, we're going to start with requesting the signature. So um, at this point in time, I want to demonstrate utilizing this 
application to request a signature from a doctor document that I've already created sitting on my desktop, just need a signature. And in, in normal or in previous instances, we would normally print it out and go request a signature. Well, I, I don't want to print it out. I want to utilize Adobe Sign to actually perform that. So um, this document does require my signature. I don't want to print it out to print, uh, to write my name on it. So I can add myself by I actually putting my email address in, or I can go and click this add me option, which will do it for me. Uh, I will also request the other person that needs to sign it. Uh, I'm not going to bug my supervisor with uh, this documents from this demonstration, so I'm just going to use an account that uh, another account that I, that I have. So I'm going to put that account in. Uh, you will see that I will utilize the tuition remission document for the majority of the demonstrations, uh, if not all of the demonstrations. And I would like to send a special thanks to Matthew Romero, who provided me this updated form um, to, to utilize uh, for all the testing that we've done. So I'm going to call this tuition remission. All right, I'm going to leave the message the same, but feel free to put in additional message, uh, change the message uh, to anything that you would like if you had some special notes. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add my file. As you can see, as I noted earlier, you can pull files from the cloud, from locations that you have uh, mapped on your uh, on your device. And here are the library templates, and we'll go over the, those later on. So I'm just going to focus on uh, getting the document. I'm going to utilize this doc here. Once I obtain that document, I'm going to uh, make note of this option here. Um, since this document was cre previously created in Adobe Acrobat or Word, uh, I, I may have created it in, uh, or filled it out in Word and exported it in, into a PDF. So since that was done, I'm going to leave this option checked because I want to add the location for the signature fields. And so that's where I'm going to click next. It's processing the document to prepare it so that I can uh, add the fields that I need. So in this case, as you can see, I, I previously had this document filled out with information and I just need to get the signatures. So what I'm going to do uh, with me being one of the si signers, I'm going to add uh, an option so that my signature can be placed on this document. So I'm going to drag and drop the signature. And I also want to include the date. Don't want to have to print it out to add a date on there. So I'm going to place the date there as well. So what that does is that once my signature is applied to the document, the date is automatically populated. So there won't be any intervention from you regarding the date. It's automatically populated once your signature is placed. Now, for my supervisor, I'm going to utilize the other account that I added. And so there's a drop down here to switch between uh, participants. Now, the anyone option provides uh, an option to add fields for anyone to complete. Unfortunately, anyone does not, uh, or you're not allowed to add signature fields for the anyone property. So just so you know, it's only for fields that can be completed by anyone. However, on some documents, I don't think you would want to have uh, fields associated with anyone once you complete it. You would hate for someone to have to to go and modify something or in some instances you may want the supervisor to have the ability to modify something that they saw was incorrect so either way just to let you know what anyone is so i'm going to select the other field and of course i'm going to get a signature and in this case i'm not going to add a date uh, and there are uh, instances where the others uh, participant, the second participant, um, 
there's a date that automatically appears and I will show you that. Or you can proceed to uh, add a date field if you'd like as well. So I'm just going to leave that uh, simple. Uh, notice that the items that I added for myself are grayed out. That just tells me that I'm no longer associated with that participant right now um, as I have placed a signature field for the uh, participant I have sele selected. So if I were to go back and select myself, those become available for me to make changes. All right. With that being said, I've said enough about that. I'm going to click on sign and send. And what sign and send does, it gives me an opportunity to go ahead and complete my signature portion, which you see the start arrow, you click on the start arrow and it takes you exactly where you need to be. And then it tells you next step, uh, that arrow turns into next. So I'm gonna click here to sign. And uh, normally I would proceed to click and sign. Uh, I'm gonna highlight that the date did automatically populate, but I'm gonna change the signature a bit since you really can't tell what it is. And um, in some instances, that's because I utilize signatures in another uh, Adobe, Adobe application to where I made the signature look a little bit bigger. So I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to go and select a signature image. Say open and um, it applied it. I'm going to apply it and notice the signature is uh, applied there. It's a little bit smaller, but I, I'd rather see the smaller signature than not to uh, have the ability to see the signature at all. So I've applied that signature. I'm going to click to sign and receive a notification that I've successfully signed the document and it's been, uh, it's proceeded to be sent on to get the other signature. Now, um, at this point, the reason we are recommending the use of Adobe Sign, yes, you can do all this with Adobe Acrobat. However, Adobe Sign offers some features that allows you to actually track uh, the, the document, uh, the, the, the status of the document, as well as notice here it says there are no reminders set for this document. This is where the Manage option comes into play. So if you click on Manage, and as you guys were able to see earlier, I have several documents sitting here out for signature. This is the one that I just submitted. So once you click on that document, notice there are several options. You can share the document uh, with another person. And this is very helpful uh, in regards to sending the completed document on to another department. So for instance, once you obtain your supervisor signature, you may need to share this with the registrars or continuing education or Johnson Gym. So this particular application allows, has that embedded to where you can actually send this completed agreement, excuse me, uh, on to the next person. Uh, of course, you can uh, add additional protection to the document and uh, reminders is the one thing that I really want to focus on. Let's just say I want to send an, a reminder uh, to the other recipient. So you can send it right now. You can set it to go every day or on a specific day. And uh, until you write a message, uh, that's when the set reminder option uh, becomes available. So you write a message. I'm going to say right now and I'm going to set the reminder. It tells you here that the reminder has been sent and it keeps track of every re reminder you've ever sent for that particular document. Uh, it provides you with history information regarding uh, an audit report about when this document was started, when it was sent, uh, if, if it's still waiting, and you can add additional notes and save those notes related to this particular document. So Adobe Sign offers you several different tools to keep track of your document and notate any information that you want to um, be reminded of regarding the whole process. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually share those 
email messages that were sent. So we're going to start with the email message that was initially sent requesting the signature. So the person, once you add your signature or send a request for that signature, the person will receive an email like this one, similar to this one, that will tell them, hey, there's a request for your signature. So not only that, I sent a reminder as well. So this document is based on the reminder where I said, please sign uh, to, to just remind them that, hey, I need you to sign this document. And it states in the subject that it was a reminder. So just so you know, uh, those things go directly to their email addresses and uh, sits in their inbox. So especially if you decide to set that reminder to go every day, every day they will receive a reminder message. Please sign the document, please sign the document. So I, I thought that's a pretty neat feature. People get pretty busy and, and sometimes emails will uh, uh, become hidden uh, based on the volume that they receive on a daily basis. So the reminders become pretty helpful. So with that being said, I'm going to proceed from that other account to sign that document. So I'm just going to click on review and sign. Now notice this is asking me to log out and that's because this request is for a different account and I will need to sign out so that that account can actually perform the signature. So I'm going to click sign out. And again, that's only because I'm using both of the accounts are mine and that's the only reason I receive that signature. But otherwise you will be redirected and this is what you'll see in regards to completing the signature. Again, the start arrow is there. You click on it and it tells you the next step is to sign. So I'm just going to do a type signature here. And apply. Once that's done, you're reminded to click to sign. Click to sign is done. And uh, they're uh, immediately given the option to download a copy of the document. Uh, not only that, uh, they receive an email that all parties have completed the, uh, the completion of the signature, as well as I received an email stating that the signature process is complete. And here it is. Not only that, uh, if you can recall correctly, when we went into manage, we could see that this document was out for signature. Now notice this is the document dated 5-28-2020. Uh, once I refresh this and it logs me back in as myself, notice that 528 document is gone, but it is down here to indicate that it is signed. And as I mentioned earlier, this is where the share uh, feature comes into play. Okay, your tuition remission document is complete. I need to send it to the Johnson Gym so I can get my workout information there and get signed up. So you find out the email of that department where it needs to go, provide them with, some, with a message uh, that you are signing up for classes. Here's my tuition remission form and share their agreement and then it will uh, get sent to that department. Uh, for completion. So uh, I'm going to go back to the request a signature and start from the library. Now same uh, same document. I just can't steer away from tuition remission. We've become very good friends. So I'm going to click on start from library and notice that there are several recent templates I've used. Uh, I'm going to click on templates uh, to identify. Now, these are my templates that I have created. Here are templates that have either been shared by me or with me or with my group. So just to be uh, so that you're mindful of uh, how to identify which templates came from where uh, you can look here uh, in the, this particular section. Uh, of shared templates to identify which templates were shared. Now, however, this particular view doesn't tell you who they were shared with. 
So I'm going to cancel and switch back to the classic experience. And this is another one of those differences regarding the, uh, the visual experiences. Notice when I click the start from library drop down list, it tells me who those documents were shared by. So tuition admission, of course, was shared by me. And then I have two other documents that were shared with other departments. And so um, uh, that's uh, another difference between uh, the two items. You can also go to manage as well. If you scroll down further and uh, close the other sections, here are the library templates which will also tell you who those templates were shared with. Uh, here's the one that was shared by Stacy. Here's the one that was shared by Kevin. With that being said, uh, SIN, uh, I just wanted to point out, this was the same process we used when we clicked on request a signature. So I'm gonna send from the library, use, utilizing the tuition remission, shared document, and click start. And again, Matthew Romero uh, provided a, a document that had all the fields uh, together, so it made it very easy to create this uh, particular template. I'm going to add myself again, and I'm going to add the other account. And notice that the message subject is already there. It's based off of the name of the template. Um, the message is there. Feel free to add it and the file is already added. Now, in this case, I'm going to uncheck the preview and add signature fields option because I don't want to add any additional fields. I want to complete the document just as it was created. So I'm going to remove that option. Make sure you remove that option and click send. Uh, we are currently using this process uh, in I IT applications uh, for tuition remission and um, uh, we've uh, had some success. So here I'm not going to fill out many. Uh, I just went ahead and clicked the field. You notice the arrow was there. It, it was it did say start, but since I just clicked in the field, it went to next. Um, just so you know that that field, this next button will take you through every field that's available for you as one of the participants in the document. Uh, however, you don't have to go through that. Uh, feel free to just fill out what you need. Of course, I'm not going to fill out this entire document. I've already spent too much of your time already. So I'm just going to scroll down to the portion where there are some required fields. To how to identify required fields, the fields that have the asterisks tell you that you have to complete them before you can proceed with this document. The other fields that do not have asterisks are optional and you do not have to fill them out. So I'm going to put my initials here as they are required to process this document. And then I'm going to click and sign. Again, that pesky signature of mine is, is still just crazy. So I'm going to re-add that. And once I go and fix it, I won't have to do that every time. So pl please know that I just haven't taken the time to go and fix it. So I've applied my signature. The date was automatically populated. I'm going to click to sign. Pretty much the same process, except you don't have to add the fields. The fields are already there uh, regarding templates. So if someone creates a template for you and uh, for use, I suggest that you use it. Make sure that you uncheck the preview and add fields option so that you can just proceed with creating the document. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but just to go back to manage. Here's the option for that document I just created and the same options are still available uh, for you regarding uh, once the document is completed. OK, so you can click on that document share reminders all of them are still available to you how to add that template sure let's do that uh click on add template here and i'm going to try to remember to switch back and forth to the experiences uh, if we were to go to the new experience uh create a usable template is sitting right here okay so as you can see i have four items in progress 
zero are waiting for me. And of course, you can go into the events alerts at any time. So I'm going to create a reusable template here. And of course, guess what my document name is? You got it. Remission. And I'm going to add that file based on the file that uh, Matthew provided. Uh, I'm going to utilize the blank tuition remission form. I'm going to leave the name as is because I want to be able to tell the difference between the ones I created. So I'm going to put blank here just so I don't mess up the one I've already created. Now the template type. Yes, we want it to be a reusable document so that it can continue to be used by uh, different people. Now, uh, this identifies who you share it with. Now, if I created this template and it's only me, if you recall the My Template section, that's where all of those templates are sitting. For any user in my group, that's currently what our tuition remission form is set so that anybody in the uh, UNM IT applications group that wants to complete, uh, oh, sorry, complete the tuition remission form, they can go and complete that form as long as they're a member of the UNM IT applications group. Uh, yes, all accounts are, are assigned to a group. What this does, this allows you to access templates that people only share with their group. Now, I do have the option to share this with the entire organization. That means anyone in the organization, regardless of what group they are a member of, they can log in and see my template and complete it uh, for their own use. So I'm just going to say any user in my group for right now. And yes, I'm going to preview and add fields. Just so you can see that even though Matthew added these fields here, uh, I wanted to show you some differences in regards to having a pre, uh, uh, you know, having the fields uh, added prior to adding, a, using it as a template in Adobe Sign. Excuse me for stumbling. So notice that, yes, all of the fields are there. All of the fields are there and available. And it says signer and, and so uh, we're going to click here. And I want you to uh, see how you can identify who is going to actually perform anything in this um, in this particular form. So who can fill out these fields based on the recipients that are listed here? So how you identify that? Notice this little tag on each field and the color that it is. So you click the drop down, that color is highlighted as anyone. So that means if I was to save this template, uh, anyone can complete those fields. However, that's not how we wanted it to work. We wanted one participant to be able to complete these fields because they are submitting their requests and another participant to approve the request. And so in this particular instance, I am going to have to change uh, the association on these fields. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't want to have to put all those fields uh, on a document that I'm trying to create as a template. Well, you really don't have to. Yes, you can select these fields. I'm just going to select a few here and select the participant that you want to associate with that field. OK, so I want participant one to be able to complete these fields. So with those fields selected, I'm going to right click. I'm sorry, I just need to click on uh, one field. I'm going to right click on that field. And edit it. change it from anyone to participant one. Yes, it can still be a bit of a hassle, especially since these fields are not in a group. However, the radio buttons are in a group and uh, you can modify the group of radio buttons 
to be associated with a participant. So that is the reason why we couldn't select all of these at once and make that change. Uh, they're not grouped together uh, like the radio buttons are. So just to give you a, a heads up in regards to, there are some instances where uh, having fields that are not in a group uh, will cause you to have to perform some uh, additional updates. So yes, you would have to go through and reassociate the participant in this group. But I would think that would be better than having to delete all these fields and re-add them. So that's just, that's just me. Uh, I, I thought that was a better option. Okay, so I, I just want to select a few of those fields, uh, maybe this one as well, uh, for participant one to fill out. And then I'm also going to go and modify the, the signature. I want participant one to be able to complete this particular signature. So I'm going to edit and I'm going to change to participant one. Okay, now I'm going to change this date because as you can see earlier, when I added the date field, uh, it automatically populated. So I'm going to delete that particular option and add this date field so that it automatically populates. Okay, all right, for participant one. So I'm also going to modify these because participant one needs to complete one, those as well as those are required fields. We would hate for someone to submit their tuition remission form and not complete the required fields. So this is where you can right click on those fields, associate them with the proper person and make those required fields an actually required field. Okay, and I'm going to do one more here. Uh, I'm going to make the modification for this one for my supervisor. And say participant two. And in this particular case, I'm going to delete this signature because we don't have uh, three participants. However, we can definitely change that to add as many participants as you want. It was just a matter of uh, identifying that at the beginning uh, of starting the process. And uh, that's one item that I missed, but please know that you can change that. So uh, these are also options that have to be completed by the supervisor, participant two, done. I'm going to make sure I change that one. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. So that's all I'm going to do with that. I'm going to click save. And my template is successfully created. I'm going to go back to the home screen. And if you click start from library and click on templates under the share template, you see the blank tuition remission document that I created. And uh, it can be uh, completed. Uh, the same way uh, that I demonstrated earlier with starting from your library. So basically, that was the procedure I used to create this tuition remission form uh, uh, that we complete that I demonstrated earlier. Publish a web form. Publish a web form. Uh, this is one of the things again that a lot of people would like to use, and it's very useful. However, as I mentioned earlier. We're still working with the vendor regarding uh, being able to dynamically utilize workflows with the web forms. However, uh, we we do have a department that's utilizing web forms and they are pretty satisfied with you. So again, uh, I'm going to name my web form. Are you surprised that it's going to be named tuition remission? I don't think you are. OK, so uh, I'm going to have a, a signer regarding that particular form. Um, and I'm going to add a countersigner. Uh, so uh, I'm going to add myself as one of the signers. And then add the other account as well. 
Now, uh, one of the things that the reasons why we're wanting to utilize uh, dynamic workflows for this is for this particular reason. Uh, these forms, uh, uh, the departments would like to utilize these forms to where someone can dynamic dynamically identify who is going to approve their form instead of having to have a hard coded person one particular person at a time. So that's what we're working on. So please just continue to bear with us and uh, we appreciate your patience. So I'm going to choose my file. Of course, I'm going to choose the blank tuition remission that uh, Matthew provided. Blank tuition remission is there. So uh, yes, I'm going to add signatures to it. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave the selections for anyone. Click on your signers and see uh, who the colors are associated with. I'm just going to leave the other fields associated with anyone. And the only field I'm going to change for right now, for the sake of time, is uh, the participant. All right, so I got to sign that one. Now, please know, uh, matter matter of fact, I'm going to go back and leave it as the web web form signer. Uh, and th this is what I needed to explain. The web form signer is basically anybody that clicks on the link for the web form to complete it. So uh, with me leaving these fields associated with anyone, they can still get in there and make modifications to those fields. However, the approver can make modifications as well, but I'm leaving it like that for the sake of time. The web form signer, it doesn't designate anyone specifically. It, it would designate a specific person if I was to change this to myself, okay? However, for supervisor, I am going to change this to the other account. And this again demonstrates why it is important for us to um, get the dynamic uh, workflows uh, uh, in use so that we don't have to designate a specific person to sign these documents. So what the UNM Children's Campus is currently doing, uh, this is what I mentioned earlier, that it is very important to utilize departmental accounts so what they're doing, they utilize creating a web form using a departmental account. And the reason this is necessary is because whomever created that web form, they get a copy and, and uh, in, they see an instance of every creation of that document uh, when they click on manage. And so this is why I say it's important that you probably don't want to fill up your Adobe Sign account with every document that's being used via web forms. It's probably best for you to utilize a departmental account so that either everybody that's in your department that is a part of the form completion process can just look at it via that account or that account can be shared with uh, with their accounts so that they can see it from uh, logging in their accounts as well. And I'll, I'll go back and go back through that account sharing portion of it. But for right now, I'm going to select that and save. I'm going to continue to save. That was just telling me that uh, all of the fields that I created um, needed some adjusting, but I didn't want to adjust them uh, just for the sake of time. So uh, as you create that, you're given a link. So you're given that link. I'm going to open a new tab, paste that link into my address bar, and voila, this form pops up for you to complete it. So you complete the form. Of course, anyone can complete these fields because uh, I didn't change who was the designated person to complete those fields. Notice that this signature field is not available, and that is because it was designated to be completed by another person, uh, by that list account that I have. So uh, click here to sign. 
since I designated the web form person, uh, whoever initiated the web form to be able to sign this form, I can click on it and say apply and it's done. Now I didn't change my, my date item to, to uh, automatically populate, but that's okay. I wanted to also show you that notice that it still puts a date below the signature also. Uh, however, um, whoever's receiving this form may want to have the date over here. They probably don't want to read that small writing. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I can click next, next. Uh, it tells me to go to supervisor and I'm going to click next. And that one is because I, I didn't uh, remove it. I didn't delete it. So that's the only reason I have to complete that signature. So I'm going to click sign. It wants you to verify your email address. This makes sure that you get the document and the copy of the completed document. So this is very important that you make sure your email address is correct. So you're going to click to sign. Just one more step. You receive an email to confirm your email address. OK. This is one of the ways that we can verify that the uh, person that was supposed to receive it, they received the, uh, uh, received the, the document. Uh, however, there could be some instances that, you know, someone typoed uh, the wrong email address. Uh, but in some instances, you could probably contact that person and say, hey, I just sent a document uh, for your signature and I haven't received it. So that person, uh, you can confirm your email address here. That's how you'll know that, yes, my email address was correct. All right. So once that's done, my apologies for that. Once that's done, your document is has been verified and has been sent. So the receiver will resend, will receive the signature request just like the rest of it. So Basically, this link is available for use by anybody to complete the tuition remission form. Uh, it's just uh, has a hard coded. Email address for who is the approver and hopefully we will get that um, updated uh, uh, within the next few months with Adobe sign. OK, uh, I think that will be it. I'm going to go back to manage. to where uh, you can actually see the web forms. So this web form that was created today and utilized today uh, is the one that was just sent. And a reminder can be sent to this person to uh, re, uh, send that email. And so this is what I was talking about. Once you create a web form, every time that URL is used to complete that form, you will get one of these instances listed in, in your web form section. This is why I have all of these items listed here. And so that that's primarily the reason why I said it would be best to utilize a departmental account if you're going to uh, create a web form to be used by uh, uh, a vast amount of people, which is what UNM Children's Campus did. And um, uh, we're glad that uh, they like the results of utilizing uh, web forms. The account sharing. This is what I was talking about. If you uh, set up your web forms to utilize a departmental account. It would be good to share that account with everybody in your office that's a part of the form completion process. And that way, when you go to manage, you can see the forms that are sitting in the queue for that particular account. So as you can see here, yes, Steve Spence, I can see the forms that are out for signature. Uh, that he probably needs to sign or that he's signed or uh, that he's canceled or created, the templates created, uh, the web forms created, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, that would be useful uh, to centralize where all your documents are stored and where everyone can look 
uh, to identify the status of those documents. So uh, with that being said, I think that covers all of the uh, steps that uh, we wanted to demonstrate today. I hope this was helpful. Again, uh, we will provide you with updates as we get more information regarding utilizing workflows with web forms and uh, the dynamic workflows uh, that we're trying to utilize. And so uh, with that being said, I, I appreciate your time and I hope this demonstration was helpful. Thank you and I hope you all have a great rest of the day.